This is Demand Better Marketing. This is a podcast that Kenny Creative have had now for like two years on and off in the making, on the back burner. We were having guests, we were having people, we were having just me talking. Today is stuck with just me. Next week, it might be me and someone else. We might bring clients on. We might bring different marketers on. It is essentially a podcast all about marketing. This is our first attempt at going live. So who knows whether this is going to be any good. I might not be all that entertaining. I have been told that in the past. (laughs) Let's go anyway. If you have any questions as we go through this podcast episode, do remember you can leave them in the chat. I've even washed my cup. My massive mug has had a little wash because the team here always say that it looks dirty and horrible and unprofessional. So the mug has had a wash. Um, Let's get on with it. Today, the first episode of Demand Better Marketing, we are going to talk all about SEO. We're going to... One of our clients... I'm not... I should not say one of our clients. Somebody once said to us, let's turn on the SEO like like it's a light switch. Like we're going to just flick the switch and the SEO is going to work. That is not it. We're going to dive into what that's all about, what SEO is, what SEO isn't, why people use it, the problem, what, how it's sold. We're going to basically do a deep dive into the problems around the term SEO It's something that really, really pisses me off, to be honest. Actually, there's a heads up. Let's go straight in with that. There's going to be swearing. I I was told to keep it clean. Genuinely, if I try that, this podcast is just going to be an unauthentic representation of who I am and who doesn't swear. This is frustrating. Let's get on with it. We're going to work out anything we can do to make SEO slightly better how we can maybe think about SEO differently. But first, what is SEO? Well, everyone's heard the term. It's search engine optimization, whether you spell that with a Z or an S, depends on whether you're in the States or not. And it's a, it's a 24-7 marketing tool. It's probably not right, but it's a, it's a tactic you use to improve your website, which is your 27, 27? your 24-7 marketing tool. And your website's always there. It is always on. SEO, basically, it helps boost, it helps engage, and it basically positions you better in the search engine rankings. I think I've said basically about five times, so I'm going to take a little look down at my screen, and we're going to move on. It's a way to get your website ranking. You want to see results from this keyword or that keyword. SEO is how we do that. But the word, or the, is the word, the acronym, SEO, is it's being used, it's fraught. People say we're going to buy SEO, we're going to turn on the SEO, we're going to engage a company for SEO. What, what the hell does that even mean? It literally means nothing. SEO is a collection of services. So there's backlink creation, there's content building, there's semantics, there's making your page speed faster. It's a whole load of different little services. But most of all, it's a way to engage your audiences, a way to remain competitive with people, and it's a long-term strategy to implement within your company, within your business and brand, and help you win traffic from search engines. That's all it's about. I, I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead, but I'm going I'm to skip to the next slide. What SEO isn't? SEO isn't something you can switch on and off. It's not a plugin that you buy off the shelf. Where you can't just install SEO in a website. That's bullshit. There are SEO plugins like Yoast, all-in-one SEO for WordPress. There's a whole load of different SEO things that you can bring in, things you can implement. But SEO is not a verb. You don't do SEO. You can't like use SEO to improve it. It's, it's the mix of everything. Like we said before, it's backlinks, content, semantics, page speed, how your page is laid out, adding alt tags to images. There's a whole load of hidden SEO techniques, things that you can learn, get to know about. But it's important. I guess SEO, I feel like I've said SEO about 9 million times at this point, but it's something you should do at your core. It's making your website accessible, making it friendly, learning, getting the semantics in place. So adding alt tags for images that might disappear. (laughs) Actually, here we go. Funny anecdote. There's a website called Surreal. They're a serial company. On their website, they have a lot of animation, moving graphics, things like that. 
myself and Jordan from a web team, we were on the train to London the other day, and there's this, on their website, there's an elephant rocking back and forth on a ball. And they, the train website, the train website, the train Wi-Fi, horrendously, horrendously, notoriously bad in the UK. We tried to load up this website because you we were looking for different ideas, and it just loaded up a rocking thing, and it just said elephant.png, where the rocking elephant is meant to be. That is the file name, but there was no alt tags. There were no descriptions in there. That would have probably been an all-around better experience if there was some stuff in the background where it said, you know, elephant standing on ball. That's how it would present in screen readers. These are all little things. I mean, I'm really down in the, the depths of SEO. What SEO isn't, though, is dead. People keep saying, oh, SEO's dead. Is it worth spending my money on SEO? I, frankly, no. If you're buying... The, SEO as a package, as a, oh, we're going to pay an agency to SEO us. That, no, don't do that. Look for specific things, specific action items you want an agency to take. And that's probably going to work out a lot better than some, some guy or some silver bullet SEO fix. That will never, ever work. But I've talked a lot. I'm going to have a little drink. Bear with us. My nice clean cup. Why do people use SEO well? To increase website traffic. That's number one. People, you, you think about SEO when you want to increase traffic to your website. You want to win more organic traffic from Google. You want more brand exposure. You want more people to know about you. That's why SEO is important. To gain a competitive advantage, if we find out one of Kenny's competitors are ranking for one thing and we assume lots of traffic are coming to their website, we could do something slightly nasty and write posts that beat that post out but that real realistically is the harsh reality of business so people are doing that people are probably doing that to your company without you realizing it you kind of need to be putting your thoughts and your leadership your expertise out there to be giving yourself the advantage in the market if you're i'm trying to think of companies of ours if you sell leased lines and it services people want to know how much how long does it take to install what are the processes? You can write and think about things that start buyers on the journey. And I guess that's, that's how we use SEO. Can you think about the customer journey? What are people going to need? Okay, well, before engaging with Canny, they're going to need a brand and brief. We wrote a post about how to write brand and brief. We offer it up as a download. People find it, start the journey of, you know, getting used to talking to us, engaging with our content. We might not hear from them for five to six months, but it kind of comes around, boom, new client in the bag. What we want to do is use tactics, SEO tactic, tactics, tactics? No, let's not say tactics. Um, SEO tactics to raise the profile of that post. We want backlinks to it. We want to make sure the content's worth linking to, worth reading. It's an easy read. Google understands what it's about. That's what SEO is used for. But I mean, that post, we use it to increase conversion rates on the website. We use it to generate leads. It establishes our thought leadership. I was on a call today with a guy who was like, I have read a lot of web design briefs and yours is far and away the most simple, the most simple one that we've read. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're in marketing at this point, you've definitely heard about SEO, like, I think even my mom and dad understand what SEO is and they, they don't know how to turn their iPhones on. So yeah, chances are you have a pretty decent, decent idea of it. Here's a stat. Chris, my able assistant here, has pulled down a stat which is much, yeah, much more prep than I would have done if this was solely down to me. So 61% of B2B marketers stated that SEO and organic traffic generate more leads than any other market initiative. That's from HubSpot. So 61% of B2B marketers state SEO and organic traffic generate more leads than any other marketing initiative or activity they do. I mean, that, that is a hell of a lot. For context, at Canny, we have spent hours and hours and hours writing posts, working on our website, creating content, making sure everything we need to rank well, our SEO is on point. That is pretty much the only marketing we've ever done. We have spent maybe a thousand pound on paid ads. We're testing a few paid ads things right now, actually. 
and we've spent a little bit advertising in one local magazine and we once spent £13 on a Facebook advert that didn't work. But apart from that, we've grown a half million pound company out of content marketing and SEO alone. So to me, it's invaluable. It's worth a lot. But I just hate the way that it's sold. And remember, SEO is not a verb. You don't do it. You do the things that account for SEO. It's a colloquial term. There we go. That's a, that's a long ass word for a Wednesday afternoon is colloquial. Oh, Chris, maybe we should have a word of the week. Colloquial. I like that. I don't even know how to spell it. Hey, ho. <laughs> SEO's problem is it's kind of, it's sold as snake oil. Like people don't understand what they're buying, but there's a lot of people selling it and people are more than happy to sell and rip off. I was talking to someone in a networking event the other day. We're paying thousands a month for SEO, and we don't even know what we're getting from it. We don't understand the return. We don't understand why why we're paying. And that, to me, is it's just horseshit. We've moved on from bullshit. It's horseshit now. Um, people are selling it. People don't understand it. Therefore, they hike up prices and basically take advantage of marketing teams, marketing departments, businesses that just don't know anything about it. And it's too package-heavy as well, like, I've never understood this. Here are four SEO packages, Boost, Boost Plus, Super Boost, and Max Boost. Like, they are essentially the same thing, but Shelly, your business is different. Like, you don't need to buy a package. You want to you wanna buy something that's going to move the needle for your company. So why buy an SEO package? You want it to be personable. Like, SEO should... SEO, now I'm doing it. Now I'm saying SEO, like selling SEO, but... Any sort of marketing or digital marketing activity surely should start with understanding your goals, your objectives, what you want to get out of it, rather than choose one of my pre-formulated packages, give us your money, and you'll hear from them in 12 months when we've got no results to show you. That I mean, I, I'm not sure that's how it goes, but I imagine that's how it goes. I'm looking at the screen again because I've run out of steam. I am I'm nearly there. Okay, let, let, let's move on. How to detect bullshit. I've literally just got a lot of lot of questions here. Are your individual needs being met? Does your company get something? Not special, but is it is it specific to your company? A package is not going to work. Are you being charged more for it? Like SEO services range in price depending on what you want to do. There are backlink building companies out there charging thousands. There's digital PR companies out there charging hundreds of thousands. But are you being charged more than you would assume? Do you understand what you're buying? If you don't understand exactly what you're buying, stop fucking buying it. Like, that's pretty straightforward. Are you being offered a templated strategy? Like, this is what we do for companies. We do this thing, this thing, this thing, and then we get results. I don't believe that can work because your company has specific needs and therefore needs specific results. Are you being asked about what matters to your business? If they've not even engaged in a conversation about, okay, how can we help you? Mrs. Client, how can we help you with this specific thing? That that just all of that is just sending alarm bells. My my blood is a little bit boiling. I can feel it. It's pretty simple. If it seems dodgy and you don't understand it, it's probably bullshit. Uh, also, for our non jordy or Scottish fans, dodgy, slightly worrisome, slightly you know, doesn't feel quite right. That's dodgy. I didn't realize that was a um a northeast thing until not long ago. But people with nothing to hide, people that will happily, like people that are genuine and have an offering that is worth buying, they've got nothing to hide. They want to sell something. Those people are happy to lay it all out. If your SEO agency are kind of sitting and going, oh, we're not going to show you behind the scenes. Why? If we sell a service called Beam, it's all of our services in one, it's our content marketing, it's all of the SEO related activity that we do, it's branding and web design all in one. I will show everybody everything that we do with all of the hours, all of the time, everything behind the scenes. If someone's not willing to do that, why are they hiding something? Shelly, if you're coming in honest, open, you've got something to sell, then you'd be happy to lay it bare. I was going to say you'd be happy to get naked, but I don't think you should get naked in a business meeting. Uh, <laughs> Let's skip on. Let's, uh, let's go. I was doing well on the podcast up until that point. Okay, SEO. What do you do instead? So SEO packages, we've talked about them already. Two seconds. 
We're avoiding SEO packages at this point. I hope I've done enough to kill packages dead. Ask others who've engaged with agencies about their experience. That's a natural thing. If you're going to spend thousands of pounds a month, reach out to other clients, run checks against them and see if they're ranking for things that you, you know, obvious things that they probably should be ranking for. Look at case studies and testimonials. They often, <laughs> testimonials might not be worth a salt. Try and find the people on LinkedIn, dig in, email them message, ask them questions. Don't get into bed with the first person you speak to about SEO. That's pretty standard, especially if they're naked. Don't go doing that. Um, avoid buying SEOs, SEO packages, anything that says, we will fix your website traffic. Uh, although actually saying that, that's probably okay. But if it's wrapped up in it, we are the magic fix all solution to your SEO nightmares. That, yeah, that sounds bad. Just avoid stuff like that. But most importantly, read up about it and learn a bit yourself. I know business owners, marketing teams, marketing departments, we're all busy. We, we just are. But there's some AREFs, A-H-R-E-F-S, AREFs. They have a YouTube course that will take about 30 minutes to at least understand the basics of what you could be buying. Google have got their own guide. Moz have got guides. HubSpot have got guides. There is enough SEO content out there to sink the ship. So do all of that. But how can we make SEO better? How can you get more from your SEO engagement? First of all, understand it. Like I've just said, do the reading. Do a little bit of education. Don't go in blind. Don't hire top. I'm doing this like the numbers are making any sense. One, understand it. We've been all about understanding it already. Two, don't hire Tom, Dick, and Harry to do this for you. Your auntie's niece's cousin might understand SEO, but, you know, go with reputation. Go with people you know, like, and trust. That's obvious. And then three, remember, it all starts with your goals and objectives. If people aren't asking about how they can help your company, what the SEO might do, what the SEO, what SEO might do for you, how digital marketing can improve your company, then that is the pretty much the biggest red flag. And of course, remember, SEO is not a verb. You can't SEO something into place. You can't, I mean, you can fix SEO. SEO is not a verb. Let's leave that there before we get too linguistic and I lose my train of thought entirely. Q&A, Chris, are you saying that is a question in the chat? Or we have a question from Giorgio asking where SEO and marketing cross. SEO and marketing cross. Marketing is obviously the bigger, wider activity. SEO should be a thing that lives within the marketing department. Like, unless you maybe have a technical department, but SEO should be one of the strategies that you lean into as a marketing department. It would remember it's a bigger, more colloquial, there's that word again, colloquial term for a set of services. It's not a service of its own. It builds, you build your SEO presence, you build your SEO, the results you get from SEO. Lots of little things laid on top form SEO. And other questions that were submitted ahead of time were, how much should I be spending on SEO to see actual results? That is literally the hardest question in the world to answer. What results do you wanna see? If you say, I wanna sell one cinema ticket, then you could probably get by with a minimal budget. But if you say, I wanna sell a million, 200,000 pound Lamborghini Gallardos, that is gonna be more difficult. There's a lot, there's too much variance there. I've seen SEO companies selling bullshit for 299 pound a month. But then I know some of the biggest agencies in the world are going out with 100, 200,000 pound a month engagements. It is totally subjective to what you wanna achieve. Another question was, is there any way to tell if SEO is working or failing? I can never find a clear enough answer online. Okay, that again, there's a few things you should be checking. Check Google Analytics, see where your traffic is coming. If a lot of traffic is coming into your homepage and not specific product pages, blog post pages, service pages, there might be an indication that there's something wrong. If you have access to a tool like SEMrush, AREFs, you can put your website in there. You can check what you're ranking for, see what sort of positions different things on the site are in. And there are also some free tools, none of which I can remember, which is desperately racing through my head. But there are some free tools where you can check your SEO positions. Later, I will send a wrap-up email. We'll put some things in, put in some useful links. And then finally, what is the relationship between SEO and content? 
And are they the same thing? Absolutely not. Your content marketing is one thing, your SEO is another, but they should work together. So content marketing is writing posts, writing pieces, writing articles, distributing them online, distributing all over the place. And SEO makes them better by getting, like I, I gave the example before of the brand and brief or the website brief post on the county's website. That is the content marketing piece through SEO tactics, like improving the post, getting more backlinks, making sure everything on the page is semantic. It makes sense using Google's markup and algorithm. That, that is what improves the post. That is what makes them better. And that's how SEO and content work together. Unless there are any more questions in the chat, I have the chat window shut, so I'm going to rely on a wave from Chris. Have you any more questions? We are all good. That is demand better marketing. We, we've only lost one person in that time. That's all right. Hopefully, that's someone in the Kenny studio getting back to work. I bet it's not Jordan. <laughs> um, this has been demand better marketing. I, I wish I had a signature sign off. I, I feel like I need a little call sign to get get out of here. But um. Tune in next Wednesday. We are going to be live every Wednesday at 4 o'clock on LinkedIn on Riverside. We'll send a link out through email. Otherwise, watch for the recording back on YouTube. We'll slice it up. We'll put it all over the place. I hope it wasn't too painful. My Jordy accent didn't get in the way too much. And, yeah, we'll see you next time.